we reached 30 days without a load shedding, a feature that in the past was a non-event, but for us, given the past two years' experience, this has been a, a very good moment to reflect on. And the reason why we did that is because we now can begin to role model what good looks like. We're not there yet for our staff and for them to actually yearn for more in terms of repeating the experiences of the last uh, 30 days. We recognize that what really transpired here is a culmination of interventions started a year ago. And uh, to that extent, we wanted to make sure that that moment does not go unnoticed. It is important that we build on it, uh, that the confidence of our teams uh, increases from that perspective, uh, and in that way we can move towards uh, doing this as a daily routine. So let me take you through the um, state of the system update for winter 2024. Uh, both Becky and um, Monde will also join me. Homozo, who runs a transmission business, is uh, out of the country on business. Uh, but uh, we have uh, all aspects of it covered. Just as a starting point, and to make sure that there's no ambiguity in terms of the key messages that we want to leave you with, uh, I thought it prudent that we really state up front some of the key takeaways uh, that you need to uh, note from this conversation this morning. The first one is that when you look back at the winter 2023 um, system address and the actual performance, we stayed within the frequency range as anticipated uh, or as uh, forecasted at the time, and we have stayed within uh, stages two and four most of the time. Uh, with an occasional um, you know, touching point at stage six uh, through that. And you will see why I'm building up the story uh, this way as we go through the presentations that, uh, and the slides here after. The second point is, of course, that the chairman has touched on around the generation recovery plan. This plan really gained traction uh, as, we, as uh, the winter of last year began. It focused on people, both leadership and uh, our staff's competencies, uh, morale, issues of uh, culture. It focused on plant performance and also processes and governance uh, that dealt with how we ran the business. Um, as I said, this process is uh, an internal driven process based on the many reports that we had uh, received. We have included also the recommendations of the VGB report uh, that came later on last year, and Becky will actually show you a history of all of those, how all of those are collated into our execution plan. We do have, of course, uh, support also from the NICOM structures uh, as set up from the, uh, uh, from the government-led process in there. When we take you through to the next slides, you'll see that between April 2023 last year and March this year, the reliability of our power plants has improved. And this is as we uh, continue with the execution of the generation recovery plan. Two key KPIs there, year-on-year -year improvement in terms of unplanned uh, losses at 9%, and also the decline in the number of unit trips, just under 20%. The latter is very important because it deals with the reliability of the fleet uh, once it is out of, uh, out of maintenance. And it is this component that will get a lot of attention as we proceed beyond just the addition of capacity um, to, to our fleet. The frequency and intensity of load shedding in the last year has also declined. We will be able to show you the graphs that show that, uh, which will explain to you why performances as seen over the last 30 days uh, will be uh, anticipated. We're not out of the woods yet, but it is a trend that is encouraging given the investment that has gone into the generation recovery plan. For winter 2024, uh, which is the point that we are here about. The likely scenario from our assumptions is that low shedding will be maintained within uh, stage two at most. In the extreme case where uh, the unreliability increases, uh, that component may go um, occasionally stage five, but we uh, really think that on the basis of what we see, the performance of the fleet, uh, load shedding will stay uh, within stage two from a planning perspective. This is on the back of a, a decrease in terms of the baseline unreliability um, uh, capacity uh, reduction of, uh, of a thousand megawatts, which uh, is what we use for baseline assumptions there. 
Over the winter period, work continues, and we are targeting to reduce the unplanned losses by a further 1.7 gigawatts. This will be made up of uh, 1.3 gigawatts from uh, uh, partial load loss reduction that Beck is driving with the team. Uh, but also, Monda will also show you how uh, the demand side management initiatives are also uh, underway. I just want to remind all of us that uh, our ability to beat load shedding this winter still depends on our collective uh, collaboration. And uh, to this extent, we'll be launching the uh, energy saving campaign in the month of May and asking all of us to play a part in this regard. So how have we set up our outlook briefing this morning? We will recap on the winter 2023 outlook performance. We'll now set the context for the winter 2024 outlook that gives you some of the key drivers of the performance that you anticipate. And Becky will delve into the finer details of what work is really being done in tackling unreliability of the units as we proceed. As the chairman indicated, we are in the middle of the, uh, the journey that we had set out since uh, uh, last March. Last year, we showed you this picture um, that indicated load shedding uh, uh, free, uh, forecasting ranges, the base case based on 15,000 megawatts of UCLF and ranging up to 18,000 megawatts. We stayed within the base case in the 1.5 gigawatt stage um, and in that process managed to stay within stage two and four as indicated with occasional stage six load shedding. The actual load losses averaged about 16.5 uh, gigawatts. And what is really changing as we go into this uh, season's forecast is that the base level for UCLF number as we go through uh, is, uh, is lower by 1,000. And um, uh, when you understand the capacity that we have, um, it does not look uh, as a big number, but when you actually understand the implications in terms of the levels of load shedding, um, to be able to bank that capacity is an important aspect. And how did we get there? Um, when you look at the, the time period between the last winter and now, you can actually see on this trend the reduction in the unplanned um, losses, a 9% drop as I indicated. It is mostly coming from the priority stations that were targeted uh, as focal points. Um, we also have the benefit of the earlier return of the four uh, Kusilo units uh, that were out. And as we speak, the loss, losses are averaging around 14.2. Um, our focus and target in the coming financial year, or this financial year that we are in, is to keep this below 14 um, gigawatts. This is where the first capacity release is really coming from. The uh, slope decline is not as fast as we want to. Uh, our focal point uh, this year is to really deal with uh, six or seven key areas that causes unreliability, and once we tackle them, we should be able to see ourselves comfortably um, at lower levels th than this. The second point that I want to uh, also share with you from last year's performance to date uh, is the continuing um, decline in terms of the frequency and intensity of load shedding. And from this graphical depiction, you can actually see that uh, starting with stage six in black, stage five in red, uh, stage four brown, you can actually see the phasing off uh, of this from left to right, April 23 uh, through to March 2024, dominated by mostly stages uh, two and uh, three and, uh, and one, uh, and no load shedding to date when it comes to the April month. Again, the return of the capacity that we have spoken about, the decrease in the uh, unreliability of, our, of our, uh, our fleet is contributing towards the, um, uh, the performance that you're actually observing. I think I need to, I need to go back to uh, the, the first point that um, uh, I, I, I probably didn't spend time on with regards to the 30 days of consecutive no load shedding. This was achieved with the diesel spend being 50% of the budget. A budget that is actually half of what was there previously. So, so when Becky shows you the buildup of the, uh, you know, uh, the EAF and also the actual numbers of diesel spent, you will begin to relate yourselves to a narrative that uh, what is really behind the performance that we are seeing. There is capacity uh, that is uh, uh, emerging from the work that we are doing from maintenance and we are not banning diesel to the extent that uh, uh, others would like to believe. In fact, uh, with my uh, understanding, there's quite a number of uh, 
uh, vessels floating in our ports, in our seas now, uh, uh, unable to sell the uh, diesel that they anticipated will need at this point in time. So for winter 2024, uh, as I indicated, we anticipate to maintain load shedding within stage two. This is premised on the 14,000 megawatt of unplanned uh, outages. We are doing a lot of work and focusing on that one aspect. To date, in the April month, because this forecast, we really began with it at the beginning of, uh, of April, we've seen uh, good progress that is really moving us from the most likely scenario, uh, that is moving us towards the base case where we have, for April, um, uh, not experienced any load shedding through to date. The plan is to continue to drive our teams to perform at the level that we have uh, experience thus far. We should, uh, at worst, at worst, place us in the middle um, of, the, of the forecast window that we, we see through that part. Load, load losses, uh, capacity losses, will become a big focal point um, over and above just the capacity returns that we have uh, put on.